Federico Ferrante here from uh, Azimut Yachts. Uh, we are aboard uh, our S7, uh, so uh, one of the four uh, models of our S collection. So just to quick reminder, S6, S7, S8 and S10. And so we're gonna go today uh, through a pretty comprehensive uh, walkthrough where we are going to uh, show you uh, most of the features and uh, a lot of actually the things that not necessarily you see in, in other ways on, on more standardized uh, forms of communication. So I'll try to go backstage and show also a little bit of the technical side. Uh, we'll definitely go in the engine room. So uh, let's start uh, actually while we are here, let's start from uh, this cockpit, which is uh, incredibly uh, rich and full of features. So going here towards the, the back, the transom, the aft of the boat, uh, you see what it looks like and it is a sunbathing area of course with the foldable backrest but this area right here is, is a concentrate of a smart and engineering solution when it comes to boating. So for instance you have uh, an immense amount of storage which is easy, uh, easily, easily accessible uh, from uh, various areas that we're gonna go look in, we're gonna go look and uh, this is where you can store as you can see all your covers your windows covers product product cleaning and so on and so forth now one will say why do you have access to this storage also from these uh, two compartment and the reason is that these are specifically designed for these folding chairs that folds uh, in uh, in a flat configuration and you can slide them in and out from those uh, uh, storage uh, uh, units without the need of uh, opening from the top. So those two pockets are designed to accommodate uh, uh, the chairs. Uh, moving on this side, um, you do have another axis of storage, you know, more flat and we'll see why that's, that's under here is also the garage, which uh, we'll go uh, look at, take a look at later. So, but again, storage space under this unit. And then of course you have uh, a main, center area and any any access uh, of course doesn't require to remove or touch the cushions every storage locker you have seen opens and close with the cushions on top and so this is another area where uh, uh, you know can be uh, used for storage so this entire area is sunbathing but offers the entire volume uh, is uh, uh, dedicated to storage in a very modular and uh, a fraction way so when you have to access us something not necessarily you need to bother someone which is staying there if you have to open this hatch while we are in the cockpit in the aftermost areas of course uh, we always uh, like to uh, talk about storage in this specific configuration they haven't used it but we created this pocket where the extra line which will be on your cleat can go on inside this storage locker which is designed to hold the lines nice and clean out of the cleat uh, so exactly the opposite as it is right now. Other technical locker, which we have looked also on uh, other models, emergency bilge pump, handle for your capstans, and uh, emergency bilge pump uh, lever and valve selector for where, uh, which bilge area the emergency bilge pump will shuck, suction water from. So <coughs> each bilge has, of, of course, electric pumps. In case of emergency, in case of the electric pump going bad, they had we had installed emergency manual pump so this is what it is you put that handle in that hole right here and then you can use your hand to suction water in case of emergency um, moving this way uh, this entire sofa once again is available storage and uh, i will actually open it for you because it's uh, worth it and uh, will give you an idea of the amount of volume. In, an, in a European configuration, this will be the perfect spot where to put a life raft, uh, because over there is mandatory. Uh, here in the US, you can put a life raft here, or you can use it for uh, an immense amount of storage. And this is one side of the sofa, which then lock into position, and also under that uh, cushion right there <coughs> is all dedicated storage sealed and watertight and waterproof uh, in every area. Now, while uh, we are here and this, we have this inspiration piece, uh, these uh, give us uh, a message, and let me move this plant out of the way. 
because this table not only is actually a piece of art, but is made of uh, extremely light gray finished carbon fiber, uh, which uh, tells us a story. You have carbon fiber here, you also have carbon fiber here exposed. Uh, we love carbon fiber, who doesn't like the look of carbon fiber? The entire superstructure and the garage door of the S7 is all uh, built in carbon fiber. So we have components, these, uh, of course there is some weight saving, but this is more a cool factor, it's more uh, a good looking table uh, versus uh, the, the, the structure of the boat as well as uh, heavy components like a garage door and so on and so forth. Being in carbon fiber, they affect tremendously the performance uh, of the boat. Um, the way this table works, there is a, a very simple uh, locking system here. So what you do, you just move this back because you can accommodate eight people for a beautiful alfresco dining in a very simple way. You extract this leg, you take this part of the table. Again, I mean, I can have you feel the weight, but I can have you see the feeling. And here you go. You have a full eight people, comfortable alfresco dining under the roof in the shade uh, with uh, basically two move. When you're done and you don't want it all the, all the way, <clears throat> you just close your uh, legs or support brackets and under here and uh, once the boat is yours you will remember exactly where it is you have a mechanical lock is locked in place and you're done two seconds and uh, moving uh, on the starboard side of the cockpit my, my plan to go back where it belongs and uh, we have uh, our uh, wet bar so beautiful surface in case you want to use it to serve food and have a, uh, you know a countertop available but uh, if you open it you have your hot water cold water sink and your barbecue underneath you have uh, your ice maker trash compartment ventilated ice maker so always ventilation is very important to make sure that appliances have the air they need to perform and uh, here as you can see very beautifully integrated uh, most likely if you wouldn't see the handle you wouldn't even think uh, that there is instead is your cockpit refrigerator two drawers and uh, uh, ample capacity to serve immediately the cockpit well we will see there is plenty of extra refrigeration inside so uh, if you look at this as far as engineering and you see how balanced and beautiful is the integration of a ladder which will go to the flybridge where which of course we we'll go through later a wet bar which when in function has this uh, kind of uh, feeling but when it's closed you it almost disappeared you have uh, this beautiful again gray carbon fiber uh, bar top if you wish and all integrated under uh, the shade of the cockpit for a, a very unique and outstanding uh, alfresco experience i would say like every Azimut yacht, this little panel right here is where you have your uh, battery switches. So you don't need to turn on or off all your breakers of your commonly used uh, DC components before leaving the boat. You leave everything inside and in the engine room panels the way you want them to be. You just flick this uh, little tiny switch and the boat goes, all the DC power goes off, apart from where it needs to be on, such as like uh, bilge pumps. Uh, so this is very convenient. You have your engine battery switch, your generator, and your service battery switch, all in one panel, of course, and your emergency stop right here. Audio control, fusion audio control. And I think this is probably the, the best time to go inside. So the way this uh, has been uh, achieved is through doors, which are uh, fairly sophisticated when it comes to movement. And... Uh, uh, you know, but they give uh, that kind of uh, feeling of once you move the, all the door away, it slides into this pocket with the one end, very simple, and it locks safely in position. You see, it's locked, nothing move. So you can do that also when you're at the anchor, if you have some rolling, uh, there is no problem. Now you are creating this uh, very open feeling uh, uh, concept where the interior communicates with the exterior, you can appreciate that we have no steps so from the transom you get into the cockpit and you're walking through this and all the way until the first step you encounter 
is the going down to the lower deck. And so now you have a completely uh, flowing one environment. And if the weather doesn't allow, it's too hot, it's too cold, of course you close the door and then you're creating a more traditional layout with the separation. While uh, we are approaching the interior, <coughs> this is, uh, we offer the, this model, the S7 in two um, decor, we call them, two look configuration. One is called Perlanera, black pearl, and the other one is called platino, platinum, which is this. Um, so this one has uh, two uh, wood, you have a brush oak, so a very 10% gloss finish, very materic uh, finishing to this wood, so you almost feel like you're touching a, a, a raw natural piece of wood, uh, right next to 100% gloss mahogany. So again, the combination of uh, a very materic, a very wild, if you wish, uh, to the touch and to the look, uh, so very warm, a very, uh, you know, um, warm uh, material with a very luxurious mahogany, 100% gloss, so something a little bit more sustained, and the combination of the two together, then in addition with the uh, beautiful, innovative uh, uh, materials and stainless steel trim, create this look, uh, which uh, uh, is uh, the signature of uh, a, a very renowned and uh, sophisticated designer, uh, you know, Francesco Guida is his name. So Francesco Guida is the designer which designed the S7 interior. And while we talk about designers, <coughs> Stefano Righini is the uh, iconic Atimo designer which designed the exteriors. And we'll, we'll look at some of his uh, signatures touch on the exterior as well. So while we are in here, we'll go through the features. As I said, I'll try to show you uh, maybe more behind the backstage. So this is, of course, is, would be your glass cabinet, your bar. I just opened it so you can look at it better, but it was clear already. And uh, underneath, again, plenty of uh, storage and bottle holder uh, for uh, this uh, bar party area if you if you wish you have uh, of course uh, uh, you know a little bit of storage for audio video here all your china is actually located here so this is your full china set very close to the galley very close to this area which can be an internal dining we'll see how and of course very close also to the external dining area so all your china it is one place all your glasses are there and you have storage for extra liquor and bottles and of course uh, you can miss a, a wine cooler so in this uh, compartment right here you have uh, your integrated wine cooler so everything in this beautifully designed piece of furniture which integrates <coughs> this amount of features of course ILO 55 inch uh, television this uh, ILO has a switch right there up and down arrows when you want to watch television you bring it up of course but when you don't it completely disappears integrated in the back of the cabinet in order to uh, you know leave as much as of this uh, natural light and beautiful view uh, possible and available in this uh, in this salon moving on the port side this is a, a very a very interesting and sophisticated layout first of all i personally believe those are two pieces of art if you look at the, the stainless steel base of these tables they are uh, of course electric they go up and down they're extremely quiet they're controlled by those two switches right there in the corner and uh, they create uh, they, they allow you to create a very multifunctional area uh, if you for instance would put them in the in the lower position um, they have uh, a more a coffee table configuration so you're lounging now on uh, on this sofa and you have the you have a uh, uh, the table down and is more in a, in a, as I said, in a coffee table configuration. And uh, you can put your feet on it, you're watching a movie, you put your pillow there. This is the perfect uh, position to be comfortable and relaxed on board. Uh, if you bring them up as they were before, you can uh, actually extend it. You know, they both open and uh, move and slide and uh, they become basically one large table, similar concept of uh, of the table we have just seen in the cockpit but times two 
uh, for uh, dining inside eight people again in a comfortable configuration or you can leave one down and one up and uh, this can be uh, for instance uh, a morning breakfast nook table where uh, that uh, is uh, your coffee table configuration and this will be more always up so you can they're dynamic or you can take it uh, down as well they work in a very simple way so they slide for instance this uh, uh, if it would be in a coffee table configuration of course we would have uh, uh, slide it uh, forward in order to create uh, this more distance so again uh, the concept is extremely dynamic uh, they fold and open and uh, can create a very large dining table one can be down the other one can be up they can both be down so very versatile is a, a very versatile way uh, of uh, configuring the salon through these tables uh, sofas again we always talk about that sorry uh, the entire sofa is dedicated to storage so the entire volume of this C-shape, a beautiful Italian leather custom-made sofa. Every section is dedicated to storage, can be used for anything on board, and uh, also, as, uh, as uh, I mentioned already in other videos, if uh, we have customers which are more inclined to do sophisticated audio-video package, uh, that's a perfect spot where you can locate and place uh, some audio-video components as well. Other than that, the entire area of the sofa is dedicated to uh, storage we have uh, designed lamps in this particular uh, decor unit so we paid an extremely high amount of attention to lighting in i would say in the last decade and specific, especially more in the last five years uh, so every mm, lamp is designed from the largest uh, uh, for the largest Italian designer, so you have Floss, so you have Artemide, uh, so those uh, uh, two pieces on that bucket right there is designed, is part of the design lighting package as well. Um, this panel right here is part of the design, the, the lighting design package. So you see there is, uh, uh, there is not just lighting, if you look at boats from, uh, uh, you know, seven, six, seven, eight, ten years ago, lighting in, 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 in was this this was lighting spotlights all over the place and that's it there was no lighting design look only at this salon you have a backlit uh, glass cabinet you have design lamps uh, uh, as a piece of art uh, in the corner there you have a, a design light feature on the ceiling a design lamp on the on the on the cabinet here so there is a lot of attention of details and design to make uh, the environment uh, more and more look like home we want our customer to feel at home on their boats so if we move uh, forward we get uh, to the galley this is an open galley concept uh, therefore there's a lot of communication this is a, a part of our sport uh, collection the s uh, collection so is uh, uh, you know address for uh, maybe a little bit more a little bit less formal uh, way of boating so the galley is part of the salon which is part of the cockpit so you can uh, you can tell here a, a nice large family of uh, friends uh, uh, that uh, enjoy the space and they they all have a great time on board full galley melee appliances as uh, always on our on our product and uh, if you were wondering where would be refrigeration there is plenty so you have two drawers of refrigeration right here one and two on the bottom freezer and uh, another refrigerator is actually right here so you have a, the, the combination of these three plus a wine cooler there and a refrigerator in the cockpit so so in <clears throat> in 15 feet of length you have uh, basically four refrigerators a freezer and a wine cooler so plenty of refrigeration space uh, plenty of storage as well so this is a very big and nice as i say i always like to show the depth so almost a foot uh, deep uh, drawer this is all uh, your cutlery again all our cutlery is uh, specifically made for azimuth yachts so every piece come with the boat and with the azimuth logo on it 
<clears throat> focusing on storage in galley, you have this very convenient, these three very convenient pockets, if you wish, where miscellaneous galley staff uh, can stay. Of course, you have uh, storage and, and trash under the sink, and you have uh, the uh, mini dishwasher as well. So uh, no need to wash dishes. Uh, provided is also natural ventilation. So through this uh, switch right here, you open this glass and uh, you have natural ventilation in case you're cooking something smelly. Uh, you can actually open this one on the port side, you open that one on the starboard side, you create airflow. And then imagine if you also open the roof, uh, which we'll talk about later, uh, then of course you have you know, all the airflow uh, that you need. Uh, this material right here, in Italian, we call it quarzite. In English, to be honest with you, I'm, I don't know. It's quartz, quartzite. It's uh, a man-made uh, natural material. And uh, the, it looks like marble. Uh, and as a matter of fact, we call it statuario quartzite, which comes from the statuario carrara marble. The difference with marble, though, is that this doesn't absorb fluids, so it cannot be affected by spillage of uh, citruses, uh, orange, lemon, alcohol, wine. So you have the same look of marble, but it's much more durable and resistant in terms of uh, absorbing uh, um, fluids. Um, this will be your in-helm electrical panel. So, of course, uh, uh, you have uh, you know, your uh, DC panel and your AC panel are separated, but these are the first uh, axis, first control panel. Of course, in the engine room, you have uh, more for the main components, but these are the breakers and system that you want to uh, control from here. Um, air conditioning coming through the galley and also on the windshield. We now took all the uh, wind covers, uh, the window covers off because, of course, we want to show the boat in the way uh, it will be. The boat comes equipped standard with the window covers throughout. So when is at the dock or in the marina to be protected, all your interior material, <coughs> sorry, and so on and so forth, you will have all your uh, window covers on. Let's move to the helm. Very comfortable and uh, uh, generous. One would uh, ask, uh, why did you put the co-pilot seat on the starboard side? So if I'm driving the boat and somebody is, is with me, they need to kind of, we both need to move. It's kind of unnatural. The reason uh, is not, we, we obviously wouldn't make a mistake like that. Uh, the reason is uh, the impose uh, visibility standard by the certification entities. So this is, first of all, is a CE Class A uh, boat in terms of a classification of uh, safety and standard navigation and uh, uh, along with the tens of uh, parameters that you need to satisfy uh, there is visibility so the angles there is a very specific angle gradients that you need to make sure you respect in terms of visibility in order to position your helm so you, we need you need the that structure right here you need that structure right there because they support your superstructure and the, the helm here would have created an interference with this structure right here which doesn't provide the safest possible position so again safety first as always especially when you go out to sea so the reason why the helm is here and the co-pilot seat is here is because this satisfy in full the requirements in terms of angles of uh, visibility going into the details of the helm uh, this is a raymarine equipped uh, uh, product so our electronic packages are Raymarine. This specific unit that has the platinum package, so the best of our uh, electronic package, which uh, uh, of course include also the what we call the monitoring system. So this is where uh, the owner or the captain can also control uh, several of the functions of the boat, from uh, the alarms, uh, for instance, uh, from uh, bilge pumps. We can turn on and off and they're pointed. Every green dot here shows where a bilge pump is located and from here you control them. Then distribution of power, you can start and stop the generator here. <coughs> you can put the generator online and offline and you read your voltage and amperage drop of your either generator when the generator is the source or the short powers when uh, 
uh, shore power are the source. For instance, in this configuration, you can tell that we have one shore power plugged on board, which is feeding both bars <coughs> of the electrical system of the boat. If you would have a second shore power, you would see obviously this side green, that bar closed, and uh, uh, you know each independent. This will be open, that closed, and each shore power feed one of the two bars. And when you have generator on, everything is connected uh, and powered to the generation, uh, to the generator. Navigation page, you have your tanks, uh, fresh water, gray water, fuel, control of the pumps, controls of the windshield wipers, and navigation lights. Air conditioning is probably the most useful uh, because uh, until we started to integrate MITRE and system in this way, uh, you were forced to basically go in every single area and uh, set the parameters of every single fan coil or area at least uh, uh, individually. Now you can do that by clicking on each one of these area. You select the area, you decide what you want to do in that area. Uh, but if you don't uh, want to bother with that, you just uh, synchronize maybe during the day where the same temperature is okay for everyone. Uh, you, you hit the one button and the entire boat, the entire conditioning system is set on the same temperature and on the same fan speed level, so uh, noise. And of course you have your alarm uh, page and settings is the page that you need to change setting, you need to hold your uh, finger on that if you want to change language, if you want to change unit of measurements and all specific parameters. You can also customize the monitoring system to your own specific needs. And then of course you go, you hit the home button and then you go in the standard uh, chart plotter, radar, fish finder pages of the standard Raymarine uh, G uh, series configuration. Moving here, control station. Handles, everything provided by Volvo. So we buy from Volvo Penta, of course, the three engines in the engine room, uh, IPS the 1350, and uh, um, the levers, as well as the joystick. Uh, so it's a full package, all uh, provided by Volvo Penta, which is very important uh, in terms of uh, um, service, warranty, uh, distribution, parts, you have uh, the customer will have only one reference point and one supplier for the entire uh, proportion package. Uh, joystick always located to the most uh, external uh, part of the helm uh, because you can actually use it and look where you are controlling and maneuvering the boat uh, from this side where you also have an electrically uh, operated openable uh, window. We still provide uh, uh, bow thrusters on our IPS uh, configuration. And uh, uh, the reason, technically you don't need bow thruster on IPS, and it's true. Uh, through joystick and uh, their maneuvering uh, features, uh, you can do the same maneuvers that you would do using a bow thruster without. We still put bow thruster in because specifically here in the US, as you can see, we dock a lot through pilings and so when you want to do the finesse maneuver maybe is is uh, is a husband and wife and he is driving the boat and she's uh, uh, putting the line on a pole uh, with the bow thruster you can get to that finesse point where you don't have any movement uh, of the boat and uh, so that's why in product of this level and range uh, is worth it to to also add the bow thruster uh, for that extra uh, comfort zone so um, i think uh, we have covered the helm, about, of course, the, 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 the helm seat up and down, back and forth, electrically adjustable. The co-pilot seat instead is fixed in position. Both bolster, all these seats are handmade, custom made, custom designed for Azimuth and for the S7. So this is not an off-the-shelf seat that you can buy in any, in any uh, ship chamber. Uh, these are designed by Azimuth, manufactured one by one. And actually the leather and the color finishing is uh, selected by the washer. Customer. Perfect position, comfortable to open, close, transfer load, and uh, uh, operate them. Uh, that cabinet right there could be the perfect place uh, where uh, to put uh, you know, the, the, the various uh, soap and softener and products uh, that the, the machine needs. You close them, it disappears, and you will never know you have uh, basically a laundry set in this okay. area. Storage, uh, little shelf. This would be actually probably even a better 
to be honest, position for uh, material which uh, you're going to use the soaps and so on for the washing machine. Maybe you can leave them here, even though, I mean, you also have a refrigerator for night usage, so you might want to have some glasses here. So, but that again, you have storage on the bottom, refrigerator, storage shelf, storage shelf on top. So, uh, maximize usage of volume and space. While we go through the boat, you will encounter these components right here. And uh, this is the central vacuum system. So we try to place them in the most uh, discrete position, but also they are located in position where by connecting the hose, you can cover the largest area given the length of the hose without disseminating the boat of uh, multiple sockets. So we try to put the least of them possible while they're not that beautiful to look at in order to cover the, the most area possible given the length of the hose, which is, of course is the, is the given point. But if you wonder what they are, those are the uh, central vacuum system inlet. You insert the hose, which of course is supplied with the boat, and as soon as you put the hose in, the vacuum cleaners start because the hose has a metal ring which uh, get in contact with an, another switch in, the, in this uh, socket and uh, basically that uh, works like a switch, like a light switch, and uh, starts the vacuum, the vacuum system, central vacuum system. Appreciate also the light work, this decoration panel is all backlit LED and gives this idea of a floating uh, beautiful panel to, to create space uh, heading to the master cabin, which is uh, uh, where we are right now. Full beam, um, separation so you can see that the the bed is the furthest most away possible from the noisy area of the boat if you wish which would be the the engine room so you have uh, this entire block which is uh, we'll see is a walk-in closet shower bathroom once you close this door this entire block uh, creates a complete separation from engine room and crew quarters so granting the owner the most quiet so it's the widest part of the boat that's what we call full beam master cabin is the widest part of the boat but also the the uh, comfortable and quiet because of this air pocket insulation uh, design uh, positioning of bathroom showers and closet natural light this is a natural light galore so of course is the sport collection so we have a little bit more of an aggressive look with these uh, six uh, uh, windows uh, uh, framed instead of being frameless because of that uh, cosmetic look that we want to give to the exterior but also create a, a more dynamic and sporty uh, design without penalizing the amount of natural light so uh, uh, again if you look at the amount of light and you think about being uh, in the bahamas in sardinia in polynesia wherever uh, the Azimut Yacht uh, owner of an S7 would be and you are in your master cabin and now what you're looking at from, from, from these windows is paradise. I don't think there is a, a better place where to be. Um, very innovative, as you can imagine, is that we, we call this uh, a TV totem uh, designed to incorporate this uh, curve, of course, 15-inch uh, TV and made the custom for uh, the purpose and creates this suspended uh, element, technological and uh, advanced, uh, but meanwhile elegant and design oriented with of course this LED profile which make it look like it's kind of floating, perfect visibility from, from the bed of course. And we'll see here uh, which uh, the S7 have this very unique uh, head bathroom configuration. Uh, we'll now go through a little bit about through um, actually storage and uh, again like signature pieces of our uh, all our collection cross cross reference a um, lot of storage under the bed so uh, under every single bed unless we need the space for technical purposes and typically on a smaller boat maybe you have a fresh water tank uh, in, a, in, a, in a 34 and a 40 footer but uh, anywhere else where uh, components can be in the bilge and they don't need a space uh, under the beds is the best place for suitcases and uh, large volume uh, towels, sheet sets, uh, uh, covers and so on and so forth. So 
uh, under the beds you have a lot of storage you have that's that's of course a drawer you have a drawer set here which is actually pretty volu voluminous and you can tell it's a four beans compartment and I always like to say you know you're talking about almost a foot deep each and uh, so a lot of uh, storage for clothing here this unit right here is another immense amount of storage now three beans for that kind of uh, length right there and same depth as those so an incredible amount of storage there that area right there is uh, was uh, uh, a sort of a design inspiration uh, from Francesco Francesco Guida uh, which uh, now in this case uh, they have uh, put uh, this this sphere this decor sphere but uh, uh, you will see probably also on our website or on the brochure there were little plants so it was an area to have a sort of a, a zen garden if you wish so they are designed to put uh, decoration elements uh, which connect to the lights um, of course mirror on both sides that even created that uh, uh, feeling of depth that makes the cabin feel so big and also here we are looking at uh, uh, design pieces uh, this is for instance this is from Artemide and is called mezza chimera which uh, mezza I mean Italian means half and half because the original design of Artemide from the 70s uh, was called chimera and was as tall as I am and actually I happen to have one in my house from the 70s it is an incredible piece of art and lighting and uh, now recently they release uh, 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 they still make the full chimera and they release uh, the shorter version which they call mezza chimera because it's half of a chimera uh, those are Artemide as well uh, and they are called Ptolomeo so those uh, uh, lamps or those reading lamps that you see on top of the bed those again are uh, design pieces and um, they're not just light they are pieces of design if, if we are very uh, incline uh, to design. We are probably the most uh, uh, sophisticated manufacturer in the world right now when it comes to design, the amount of designer we use, the level of designer we use and product. So every component, every uh, combination of material has uh, hours and hours and hours of design and engineering uh, uh, behind. Um, so if you go back, talking about design, this is actually a very unique uh, solution in terms of design because we decided to do something uh, different, something innovative, which is uh, a sink outside, if you wish, of the bathroom, which we'll see later. So this is your sink area, of course, uh, with uh, storage, drawers, and uh, cabinetry um, throughout, um, natural stone countertop, uh, design uh, minimalistic uh, uh, faucets, ample mirror, beautiful top here, uh, and uh, uh, so it's outside of the bathroom in a way but of course it's behind uh, this uh, television totem and uh, so created this new uh, configuration and look. Behind this bulkhead which uh, as you can see almost seamless, seamlessly flow in reality there is a pretty decent uh, surprise because it's a full walk-in closet. Actually I walk in so I, show, I, I give you an idea of the dimension you have a 90 degrees angle um, hanging bar, uh, one, two, three, four, five shelves, a bottom shelf on the bottom with a safe in the middle, a full length mirror, uh, if you need to see the way you look before going out, a set of four drawers and another three shelves here. So this is a, a pretty intense in terms of size for 70 feet uh, walk-in closet. Uh, all the drawers again, very deep, um, you can see the amount of uh, uh, store the, 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 the uh, fabric uh, how can I say clothing that you can fit in uh, in in, uh, in uh, that storage available moving into the head it's worth it because also here storage is uh, impressive and also cleverly hidden for instance this is a huge volume of storage which uh, once closed one wouldn't even think that uh, exists. The same for here. So look at the volume. We make sure, looks like we have a lot of toilet paper rolls all over the place, but uh, uh, a lot of volume uh, 
um, you know, uh, and deep. Look at the amount of uh, uh, clothing or towels or you name it, uh, you can have here. Like this is not enough. Now look here, another storage volume. And when you lift that panel, you have uh, another storage level underneath the panel. So you can divide eventual storage component. And uh, of course, uh, this is self-explanatory, but you also have storage here. So, and again, we just moved within, uh, you know, three feet in a bathroom and uh, look at the amount of volume of storage uh, available. Look at the amount of space and how can I move uh, freely. You have a rain shower as well as a telephone shower here. And uh, this is a full residential size. So I can move and take a, a shower without any impediment and all the comfort that I would have in a shower at home. <clears throat> I always like to compare, uh, you know, showers and an elevator. I will make, make the joke that uh, showers uh, in, uh, in the U.S. are the same size of elevators in Italy. Actually, believe it or not, in Italy I've been in elevators this big. So uh, this is a very comfortable shower. Talking about the, the technical aspect, this entire panel is down with the uh, male-female clips. You lift it up and you can access the drainage for maintenance and cleaning without any need of any tool. There is no screws. There are plastic clips, uh, male, female, and uh, this lift up. You access the drainage. You put it down. You step on it. And you, you, you put down a nice kick and go back in place. Uh, detail of the stainless steel, for instance, I like always to point out Azimut logo on the handle of the shower, which means that uh, is a custom made piece for the S7 Azimuth. This is not a piece that you buy off the shelf from any brand which makes them in thousands and therefore can keep the prices in certain ranges. This is custom made by small companies in Italy, handmade for the Azimuth S7. Actually, not for Azimuth, for the Azimuth S7. Moving forward, I think probably we do the VIP cabin first which uh, again is uh, extremely voluminous and spacious uh, thanks to our signature bow uh, trapezoidal bow uh, you know you have the largest and uh, widest actually uh, separation bulkhead between uh, the collegial bulkhead and the vip cabin but it gives this uh, uh, incredible amount of space in a 70 feet uh, forward cabin. Also in this uh, uh, model bed comes up and uh, actually we talk about the vacuum the central vacuum system and here you go that's that's the hose and uh, this is the amount of storage that you have under the bed of the VIP cabin. If you wonder what this red button is is the emergency stop of the bow thruster. Is, it comes a part of the kit in case uh, for some reason the bow thruster will get stuck and keep on running because of a malfunction uh, you simply come here from there, I mean it's 10 steps, lift the bed, push this button and uh, the, bow, the bow thruster power is cut off. And under those panels you have the battery bank of the bow thruster. So that's why the emergency stop is closed to the batteries. The rest is all available storage in two levels. So that panel is lift up and you have extra storage underneath. Divided so things don't move around. This is as we said, this is our vacuum system. Uh, hose, the ring I was talking about before. This is the metal ring. You insert that into the socket. The metal ring connects the two switches and the vacuum system starts on its own. And you have an handle that you connect the various components and you can vacuum. So that's what it is. Um, again, ample amount of storage everywhere so hanging lockers on both sides and uh, shelving every time you see this kind of uh, uh, pull out for panels it means that behind here there might be components valves drainages uh, maybe gray water carbon black filters components will require access these panels are hold in place either by male female uh, pin lock system or double side uh, a 3M Velcro so they come off easy without the need of any tool so you just put your finger pull and you access the system or the components which are behind the panel. Uh, these are actually very beautiful they are ceramic so this handle again 
focus on design. Uh, this is a uh, ceramic handles, uh, which are characteristic of the of the S7. Same on the other side, as far as a locker with shelves, and uh, and then you have a ceiling uh, storage on both sides of the VIP cabin, and as well as uh, you know use of space everywhere. So sort of nice stands if you wish, because the shape of the bed. Uh, but nice stands with the drawers where uh, you can put your phone, the night book, and uh, whatnot. Uh, in suite, of course, the VIP is an in suite. The same material layout of the master cabin. So we have stone um, countertop, storage, ample storage everywhere. And uh, we have storage here and storage here. So this uh, is. Uh, the amount of storage and also right here so this you can see again in, in two feet now look at the amount of storage that you have to make sure that you can leave on board everything you need uh, when you get to the boat so that's also one of the uh, luxury and privileges is that when you want to go boating and you leave uh, your your city the place your home to go boating uh, not necessarily you need to pack you just uh, take yourself go maybe a small little bag with a couple things, but you can leave on board everything you need to, to go boating. And that's why so much uh, storage. Uh, shower, uh, six feet, uh, 75 kilos, 170 pounds and change. And I am absolutely super comfortable. I don't have any limitation of movement. Telephone shower, adjustable. I can put it away, uh, you know, at my height and uh, uh, you know, is, is really, I don't have any discomfort. I'm not in an in, 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 in RV environment. I'm on a, on a yacht, on an azimuth yacht. So the comfort level is... Uh, uh, I think we can go now to the other two quarters, which they share a head. So this bathroom right here served the double purpose of uh, uh, serving this cabin with a direct access and a direct door, as well as this cabin with this door and also works as a day head. So if you have guests on board and friends uh, that not necessarily spend the night and they need to use the bathroom, this is gonna be the day head uh, used uh, during the day. So now the port cabin is a twin, uh, very comfortable, wide mattresses, um, storage everywhere. So we have, uh, you know, hanging, uh, uh, hanging locker with shelves small and large, as well as storage under uh, the beds, which is vented. So we want to make sure that uh, uh, whatever is under the bed also has as much airflow as possible. And so you see that they are designed with vents uh, uh, in order to uh, guarantee airflow into the storage. And while we are at it, actually, all our mattresses uh, are uh, uh, Lympha is the brand and uh, is uh, the memory foam. So the top uh, quality mattresses uh, available for yachts on the market, uh, they come standard with, uh, with Azimuth Yacht. So under each bed you have storage, and we always take a look also at technical space, which is important. This is uh, the air conditioning unit of this cabin, and the same applies for every area, in every cabin, as well as the salon on the boat. So we always place the air conditioning unit in a very easily accessible location because it's uh, very important to clean uh, the filter, the, the inlet filter. So the inlet filter are held in place uh, with, uh, with uh, Velcro and they just have to come off. You clean the filter, put it back on. This is something that I always recommend to do at least uh, every couple of weeks, uh, minimum once a month. And that's why it's something that you want to be able to access very easily without tools, without the need of taking apart components. We install them in very convenient locations so they can be maintained easily and properly. And then once you have cleaned it, you put it back, has two Velcro pieces in front and you're done. Of course, you need to do it for every uh, fan coil in the boat, uh, but it is, uh, is highly recommended. As far as the storage, the same applies under the other bed where I'm sitting on. So we will not go through it, but there is a storage under this bed as well. 
uh, as we said, you can control, of course, the air conditioning from the main helm, but you don't have to. Every, every occupant of every cabin then, of course, has his own dedicated independent panel. So you will see this uh, domestic panel in every cabin, and each cabin can set its own air conditioning temperature and fan speed. Uh, so you can do either or. And this obviously prevail. Um, I would say we cover this uh, twin. This is actually a more versatile cabin. So 70 feet is, is a range where having four cabins layout is, is, is challenging. Uh, there are many, many boats in this range which are, which are three cabins still. So we wanted to provide instead four cabin uh, through a very creative, if you wish, solution, which is this L shape. So it's sort of a bunk bed, but much more comfortable. First of all, it's much easier to go up on this bed. Actually, you know, I can show you where, you know, it's extremely easy. And once you're up, it's a fully comfortable bed uh, where an adult can sleep uh, very comfortably. So it's not really a bunk bed with a ladder and stairs. It's very easy to go up and down. And the cabin, despite this configuration, perfect for kids, uh, of course, but it's very large. So you have a, an ample amount of storage, the hanging bar and shelves, and all that bottom is a shelf. Of course, you have a storage under uh, this bed. So all this bed is storage. But also, once you are in here, you have a lot of space. You can dress, get dressed, undress. So is uh, is really a fourth cabin. Uh, of course, is a little bit more uh, sporty, if you wish, than a little bit more formal, uh, formal twin or a VIP. But uh, it's a full fourth cabin, so can allow you to take two extra uh, people cruising on on an S7. So we covered the main and lower deck, so I think it's time to approach the flywheel. Actually, before moving there, I would like to notice, look at this beautiful piece of carbon fiber. We talk about the carbon fiber table, in that instance, uh, made in gray carbon fiber. And we'll see that there are different carbon fiber accents throughout the boat to always uh, remind uh, uh, the owner, of course, of the beauty of the material, but also the fact that he has uh, purchased uh, the most technologic advance uh, yacht on the market in this uh, segment and so this uh, look at this beautiful piece of stainless steel and carbon fiber frame this is obviously cosmetic aesthetic it doesn't have a structural uh, function but is a is a design piece so going uh, to the flybridge uh, we saw it briefly uh, in the cockpit later so integrated ladder so very safe sturdy handrail but integrated into a polished uh, um, az uh, stainless steel, so uh, have also this uh, kind of uh, design look, if you wish. Very safe. Again, while well, we just mentioned carbon fiber, carbon fiber profiles here as well. Very safe approach to the flybridge. Handrail, so I leave the handrail here. I have immediately another handrail to grab here and another one here. So again, I always like to point out stairs and handrail because we always do these videos when the boat is at the dock steel. It is true that we provide Seakeeper stabilization on all our boats. So rolling, the rolling I remember back in the days when I was younger and, and going out at sea uh, doesn't exist anymore, thanks to Seakeeper. But still, you might be caught in rough condition and uh, uh, so it's always good to be safe. And so if you look at this path, you have a very safe handrail. As soon as you leave one, you grab another and uh, very wide, nice and safe steps to go uh, up to the flybridge. While you go this way, look at this piece of art. I, 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 every time I've seen these uh, hundreds, literally hundreds of time, and every time I see this piece, I like to sit down and contemplate the beauty. It's, it's really, it looks like a, a spaceship, in between a spaceship and a Formula One uh, car race. And of course, uh, uh, the custom black painted domes as well have mast and uh, FLIR uh, night vision camera and rather that makes it all flow like really this is uh, uh, aggressive and, and design oriented. And while I'm here, this is a, a very comfortable sunbathing area. So we are on a, on a product from our S collection, S Sport. Uh, so is a design which is more oriented towards shape which are more affusolato you say in Italian so something more um, 
uh, aerodynamic, if you wish. And so uh, we, we, we put the flybridge on DS7 because the size allow and is also a good comfort zone for uh, this is a product which will be most uh, in most of markets uh, owner operated and uh, so it's much more uh, you feel much more comfortable driving about this big from the flybridge so there's also some practical need but still is a flybridge on an S product so you can compare size wise uh, a flybridge of a 70 feet flybridge collection versus a, a, a fly on an S collection so to be on an S collection this is a a phenomenal fry but you have a double sun baiting bed here which of course have uh, storage underneath immense amount of storage where you can put all your covers here you have uh, a refrigerator drawer refrigerator here for your drinks so when you are on the flybridge you actually can keep uh, beer and sodas uh, cans uh, here without the need to go necessarily downstairs for drink you have uh, a beautiful dinette so once again you might have uh, owner wife a significant other side by side driving the boat and you can easily have three four friends here in a very comfortable relaxed environment and again you're driving your wife is there i'm here my wife is here we chit chat we have a great time down the intercoastal waterways or anywhere else in the world you might be cruising this is really uh, this is what yachting is about spend time with friends family have a good time outdoor and this flybridge right here uh, you have two four six people can be uh, very comfortably uh, located on a, on a flybridge on the S product. This layout also very cleverly convert into a sunbathing area. So again, Italian intelligence. So you have um, a cushion here. Uh, this panel slide in. This cushion fills there. That other cushion you put it on top of this and this becomes a nice uh, some bathing area so now you have one and two some bathing area a two seating side by side driving then you put this back cushion on top cushion back in the storage close the door and you're done so the sun bathing area convert into a sofa with very simple mechanical gesture nothing can uh, give you a problem of course every every uh, the boat comes with the uh, exterior covers uh, so every time you see these uh, these uh, snaps and these devices here are because uh, uh, we provide as a standard covers for all the exterior furniture and upholstery and uh, you also have uh, a bimini top uh, which uh, folds uh, right now they have removed the fabric of the bimini top but you see this arch structure right here it opens manual this uh, uh, line right here connect to those hooks right there at the at the um, aft of the flybridge and you have a shade through uh, a very sturdy stainless steel uh, bimini top with this umbrella fabric on top uh, the helm of the fabric is very comprehensive as everything that the helm downstairs uh, has so from your sea keeper control joystick levers i don't think we want to spend too much time here and actually i need to reprehend myself because i forgot when we were in the salon and main helm galley I think I mentioned it uh, fairly quickly. I don't think we spend enough time on the electric roof. And from here, actually, we probably have a better idea because if you look at that black panel and those two stainless steel pieces right there, you can picture actually the framing. That roof completely slides open and uh, there is a shade, a curtain shade in the salon, which uh, actually can open and close independently from the roof and so you open the shade you open the roof and then you have that big section completely open air so i always like uh, you know uh, to say maybe not during the day but at night when your beautiful stars are glazing and the moon is full like it was last night here in uh, in florida and uh, you open the roof you might have uh, an incredible view and experience uh, on board uh, your yacht uh, so i think we cover the flybridge we can uh, approach the bow side boarding gates so this is uh, very convenient for the u.s market uh, where typically we dock and we have a side uh, docks um, unlike uh, the uh, european market where most likely most of the time they dock stern in and uh, in case that will be the case uh, the boat comes with a gangway 
which is uh, high electro hydraulic and controlled by those two keypads right there. One control the garage door, the other one the gangway. But in case of sideboarding, like more typical of the American markets, you would have uh, typically a, a ladder, a sideboarding ladder, and you have sideboarding gates on each side uh, already cut through. I don't think we covered this. So this is the, your docking station, cockpit docking station. Again, joystick from Volvo and uh, you have uh, uh, different features on the joystick itself. The joysticks are all the same, the one here, the one on the flybridge and the one in um, uh, the main helm. Uh, this will be your sky hook, so once you press this button, the boat will stays at the latitude and longitude crossing as well as the bow heading, uh, so it doesn't move with a tolerance of two, three feet. Uh, you have joystick maneuvering, uh, excuse me, cruising, which means that you use your joystick as uh, a rudder, basically. You're moving the pods uh, during navigation uh, through this feature. Uh, you have the high mode, which is uh, extra power from the docking mode. Docking mode is your docking, you use the joystick for docking, means that it has a limit of the RPMs uh, the engines can reach in, uh, in relation to your impressed movement. And then you have high maneuver in those instances where you have a strong current or strong wind or both, you can have uh, extra powerful uh, docking uh, features. So here you have your joystick, which again controls all your iP uh, iPod, sorry, <laughs> IPS. Um, pod drives as well as your um, bow thruster, progressive bow thruster. So we said we were going to go to the bow. While we are passing through here, this is the access to the crew quarter, which will uh, go through in a little while. And uh, you can see how wide and comfortable is the walkthrough to the bow. Very sturdy handrail throughout. Um, easy 1916 uh, uh, electro polish stainless steel and here you arrive to uh, basically the fourth lounging area on the S7 so we discussed about the, talk, the cockpit which have uh, the alfresco dining combined with the sun bathing area the flybridge uh, comfortable uh, um, available room for six people in a comfortable environment, two, set, two seating, the, the, the sofa which is uh, very versatile and here you have uh, immense sunbathing area in the, in the front side of it and uh, uh, you know a comfortable c-shaped sofa with the shade and your coffee table again when you can enjoy uh, the weather, relax and have uh, good conversation with friends and family. Uh, somebody can hang out in the sun, somebody can stay in the shade, and we all enjoy the same area, the same space. Of course, you have audio uh, system here. There is music, and that's the control, the fusion control. That black switch is the switch which control this bimini top to close and open. Uh, when you close it, you simply fold this uh, backrest so the building top falls into this pocket right here, but also the backrest uh, during navigation, high speed navigation, will not interfere with visibility when it's in a down position. Um, building top are designed always with this mesh back, so wind can go through without making them blow up uh, like balls. And you see uh, all of these uh, uh, snaps because, of course, this is a very this is the area of the boat where speed and wind from speed will affect it, so the, the cushions are secured in place uh, in a more uh, strong uh, manner than the aft, uh, clearly. And, uh, but uh, once you lift them, under each cushion you have a watertight storage throughout the entire sofa. So the entire sofa is watertight storage divided in compartment that you close and you access by simply removing the cushion and uh, re-putting them in place. Let's go down to the crew quarters. Again, storage everywhere. Uh, just to give you an idea of volume and depth, this is where you can put, of course, uh, uh, covers, uh, maybe small, small fenders, uh, cleaning product more than anything. This is a perfect position for your cleaning product. 
chamois, uh, brushes, and uh, then window cover if you wish, and uh, uh, furniture cover. Um, secured in place so they don't open in any kind of weather condition. <coughs> Two comfortable steps, again, handrail. And actually, this is, uh, this is what we're passing by here. This is a very interesting, this is one of uh, Regini. Again, we, we discussed, this is an exterior design by Stefano Regini, which actually is the same designer which, this, uh, which did this uh, 72 flybridge as well. And uh, one of uh, his uh, uh, genius touch, if you wish, was this, what, we, what he called diamond cat. So you will notice that these windows are not on a flat surface. They are on a slightly inclined surface to create an angle where they meet, which if you think about it, is exactly what the diamond cut is. When they cut diamond, they give them those uh, angle cut so the, the light reflects differently. And this is what, uh, if you see the, the, the S7 from more far away, you will appreciate uh, the details. And again, as you can imagine, it's much easier to build a boat with a flat windows then to create the right perfect angle that the designer wants but this is the result instead if you follow so i think we should go into the crew quarter and probably you want to pass by here and we go back there because otherwise two adult men with a big camera will not pass through the walkways they are comfortable and big but not that much we are still at 70 feet so the way down very sturdy comfortable handrail with actually no two time. beds with the second bed will be instead of these uh, storage units right here do you have a second bed which actually fold down um you do have uh, uh, this is uh, actually a table you know so for the crew to have uh, also a sort of a desk if they have to do their notes uh, sometimes you know fuel readings uh, and maintenance log and cruising log they want to have a comfortable little table so there's an area here where they can do their uh, their homework if you wish closet on that side which is very easy opens uh, you know with the shelves and uh, safe in this instance um, there is a storage under the bed, vacuum system also in the crew quarters, and, uh, and uh, of course, you close your table, this is uh, obviously the bathroom area, and uh, they have a separate uh, shower and uh, toilet compartment, uh, so which is actually uh, very very comfortable I mean uh, I can totally stand and move around freely uh, without any uh, limitation um, TV system of course the TV swing uh, around you know you have a you have a, a bracket and uh, you unlock the bracket for weather protection you don't want this to be a light piece of equipment and uh, he can watch his TV and rest. And then when you put it back, this uh, spring loader lock will make sure that it stays in place. Um, electrical panel, as well as uh, clever usage of space. Again, uh, hanging a bar, hanging bar for uh, you know t-shirts and shirts and so on and so forth. As well as a lot of uh, useful storage and uh, electrical panel. Uh, which actually is uh, always nice to show and take a look at. You want to probably remove. This panel, these cushions, and uh, this gives you an idea of the level of uh, technical quality. If you can come and take a nice look and as everything is organized, all the wires are numbered. We provide each boat with digital and paper <coughs> wiring diagrams. So in case of issues and problems, electricians just with the diagram uh, can come and uh, locate all the components and all the wirings, all the fed, all the loads, relays, and uh, contactor, and so on and so forth. So this is the 
level of quality backstage of uh, Azimut Yachts Engineering. Um, I want to close it right now. So this gives you an idea. Again, we are in 70 feet, so not a small boat, but it's not a big boat either. So you have to you have a lot of creative, intelligent uh, solution and usage of space. So for crew quarters, again, I think this is it. And we can go take a look at the engine room. So we got now to the engine room, uh, as I like to call it, the heart of every yacht. Uh, of course upstairs everything is nice and pretty but uh, it's extremely important and everything down here is nice and tidy uh, nice and tight uh, because if something goes wrong down here no matter how pretty it is up there uh, your experience will be definitely affected so uh, we will go quickly uh, through components and, and design this as we said is at the beginning is a triple IPS uh, propulsion package, which means that you have uh, these uh, three engines, which uh, uh, the IPS uh, approximately provide 30% more power uh, as a drive versus the equivalent in a shaft line con configuration. What that means uh, that in order to provide a thousand horsepower of moving power to the boat, in, in a shaft line configuration, you need an engine able to create 1,000 horsepower. With you have an IPS configuration, you do the same with 700 horsepower. So a smaller engine uh, means uh, several things. Uh, one of which is uh, compact. Compact means that the engine room, the space dedicated to the engine room, can be smaller and narrower. And uh, in this instance, uh, of this specific model that provides two very specific uh, advantages. One is everything we have seen going that way, uh, which is crew quarter, uh, master shower, toilet, walk-in closet, master cabin, and so on. So we're being able to move more aft the engine room and make it smaller, enable you in the same amount of feet to make much larger uh, living quarters in the lower deck. And then also when it comes to height, the fact that you don't have a shaft line, so you don't have to respect that angle of the shaft coming out of the boat and going in front of the rudders, but your propulsion system is right under the engines or right under the transmissions because it's a pod, you can drop the engines. So number one, they're smaller while delivering the same power as bigger shaft line configuration. And number two, you can drop them <clears throat> because you don't need to have that angle of, uh, for the shaft, which gives you this. This big box that you see here is a garage, which in 70 feet allow you to host a jet ski and a tender side by side, always cover, protect them from the environment. We'll see it later. We'll open the garage and take a look. But this big uh, uh, protrusion, if you wish, that you see on top of the engines is the garage module which uh, can be uh, can happen only because of an IPS proportion if this boat would be uh, a shaft line proportion we have to be much higher in order to have a garage and will never or will not have a garage we'll have a platform with a tender on it so this is uh, the triple IPS configuration as we said uh, these are 1050 each so you have a, a total of 3150 3, horsepower uh, powering the the s7 um, you know the, the performance i never go through performance too much because those are all information which are available online this is a wide open 34 35 uh, not boat cruising all day at 28. Uh, another extremely important benefit of the ips proportion combined with the uh, right hull is uh, the complete lack of vibration and noise so if you compare the same amount of power delivered by a traditional shaft line, vibration or noise are significantly higher. Uh, the IPS configuration, because of the pod and the fact that there is no turbulence, so the propellers are actually biting into clean water. Uh, that's why the revolution of IPS propulsion uh, was extremely significant. The propellers are facing forward, they're pulling 
they're pulling the boat forward and it means in a simple way that they're basically the propeller is a screw is a screw screwing into a piece of wood right imagine that and the, the propeller facing forward are screwing into clean water the, vo the water the propeller screws into has full volume there is no air there is no oxygen there is no, there's no turbulence in a shaft line uh, the propellers are pushing and they are biting into a little bit dirtier water in a way of turbulence and uh, that's why there is all uh, studies engineering and also there you need to design house properly tunnels avoid cavitation and so on and so forth but in IPS configuration, vibration, noise, and last but not least, you are in the range between 20, 25, up to, depend on the RPMs level, up to 30% less fuel burn than the equivalent power in a shaft line. So it's really a win-win configuration, and, uh, and this is what uh, we have here on the S7. Uh, fuel tank also... Uh, capacity I mean this is a thousand gallons of fuel available we typically uh, I, 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 I rarely mention range and sometimes I forget I apologize we typically design all the product to provide the, 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 the owner with the 10 hours at cruising speed uh, so uh, this means that this boat has a thousand gallon of fuel capacity our calculation always include the generators on and the return so you know diesel engines they burn fuel but they also have uh, fuel that they don't burn which goes back to the tank so our calculations are very precise they leave a 10 percent margin and we want to provide 10 hours of navigation at cruising speed uh, for every model this is the role of the rule of thumb on at least at azimuth yards so uh, range on an s7 you're looking at 200 anywhere between 250 and 300 miles range at the speeds of between 25 and 28 knots and uh, a burning of uh, 90 gallons 1900 gallons uh, 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 an hour so fuel system these are the regular fuel filters uh, uh, you have a double set for each engine uh, port center starboard behind you you can select one two or both so in case you have problem with one filter you always want to run want to run on field on one filter so then if you have a problem you run with the other self-explanatory firefighting system here is our air conditioning system so all the compressors and the compressed gas is happening here in the engine room this is a chill water system which means that uh, you have uh, compressors we compress a gas which by chemistry produce uh, cold and that cold is transferred into a loop of water you have a, a, a pump which uh, drive this water and this is this, this tell you the pressure at which that water is flowing through the boat and imagine you have a water line which goes to every fan coil on the boat that water is extremely cold the colder the setting on the temperature that you put the colder the water the compressor will generate that water goes through the fan coil which then blow air into the uh, serpentine and uh, that is conditioned air so all your gas all your noise all your technical uh, components are here in the engine room and all you have going through the boat is a line of cold water and uh, a fan which you can adjust the speed of the airflow you want so that's what is called a chill water system on an uh, Cummins Onan, uh, same, same company, uh, American brand uh, generator. In this case, we have a single unit, but 21.5 kW, which is uh, uh, ex way more, uh, there's way more power here than what you need on the entire boat. So these units, uh, this unit obviously is capable of supply power for the entire boat with very uh, minimum power management. Um, we have uh, the main electrical panel here which uh, again uh, I, I always like to uh, actually show they all come uh, with their own uh, connected safety opening device but uh, it's always nice to show the backstage or something that not necessarily is shown on average uh, uh, videos and if you come uh, this way instead you can appreciate the level of details and quality uh, that Azimut Yachts put in every 
system. I always love to see and to show in these videos the backstage, the engine room, the electrical panels, the bilges, because uh, uh, these are actually the things we are extremely proud of. Just as much as we are of the exterior design, interior design, again, if something goes wrong here, no matter how pretty is the main deck, uh, you uh, will not have a pleasurable experience. So we close it now and uh, while we are next to it um, every of our model is equipped of course with uh, tank, uh, tank uh, fuel tank reading levels in the main helm but you also have your optic level in the engine room so in case uh, the main helm goes wrong you want to make sure that you come down here and you press your two valves and uh, you have your visual uh, fuel level indicator. Uh, why only on one side? Because all the Azimut Yachts fuel tank are communicating. Of course you have a valve that you can close in order to avoid communication between the tank. Uh, let's see for example that you, are, you have water in the fuel and uh, you realize that you need to transfer fuel from one tank to the other to clean it. That will allow you to isolate the tanks from each other uh, for maintenance, the service, and so on. Uh, but uh, in an every in a normal day operation, the tanks are communicating to each other. This is why you need a visual gauge only on one tank, and that will give you the level of both of both tanks to that level. Um, again, going uh, this way, you have uh, this is actually the central vacuum system hose that we we have seen before there is a spare one here for some reason um, going this way you have uh, actually a lot of room again this is a technical space of course i'm not walking in, into a salon or, or or a hallway in the lower deck this technical space requires uh, some adaptation that's that's normal we are now in a technical environment once once you're here you can stand this is your transmissions that you can access control check service in a very comfortable way even the middle one uh, i don't think is the case for me now to go down there but i could uh, i mean there is room to do all the needed maintenance over there i have two hydraulic two hydraulic units one is for the garage door the other one is for the gangway uh, easily serviceable a refill oil uh, oil um, tank uh, checking uh, uh, condition and maintaining uh, you know it's all there is there is a definitely a, a decent uh, comfortable amount of space here to do your check and your maintenance these are actually the minimum bypass uh, mufflers of the exhaust so until the the engines runs at a certain rpms exhaust uh, water uh, comes out uh, from the side and then when there is pressure enough comes out from underneath so this if you wonder what these big uh, chunky uh, components are <coughs> fresh water pump again this uh, is not here by accident uh, these are components which sooner or later go uh, uh, are, are very stressed they used a lot and so you wanted to make sure that they are in very comfortable position to be worked on, to be maintained, to be checked, to be reset, to check your uh, fresh water pressure system. You have your manometer here, your reset button here, and uh, in case you need to either replace the brushes of the motor or replace the entire pump, the position couldn't be more comfortable than this. You undo these uh, four bolts, you disconnect this line from a quick disconnect up here, and you take the pump, service it, replace it, and put it back. So it's not hidden in a, in a stupid uh, position. Ah, this is nice. Fail safe galvanic isolator. Why not talking about it a little bit? Um, this, uh, to make a long story short, what this does is protect the underwater metal from galvanic corrosion. And uh, you can see what this does is basically it separates the ground conductor coming from the dock. This is the shore power cord. The ground conductor is separated by this component. What does it mean? It means that now, even though you are connected to the same dock in the marina with all the other boats, you are not connected to them in terms of grind, ground wire, which, in, 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 to make a long story short, that is what would cause 
corrosion and problem of zincs erosion uh, in case you don't have a fail-safe galvanic isolator because if the boat next to you has no zincs and you do have good zincs and you're both connected to the same ground without this component what you are doing what your boat is now doing is protecting the boat next door so your zincs are deteriorating at twice as much the speed because you're protecting you and him or her and that what that means that they're going to run out faster and you're going to get your underwater metal damage because you're protecting someone else just because you're connected at the dock and they are not doing their job maintaining their zincs this cut that line still protect uh, the ground protection so ground is a safety equipment but through this you're no longer connected to any other boat on the dock so uh, your zincs are only working for you or protecting your underwater material after the engine room, uh, uh, we are approaching our stern. Again, I always like to put a lot of attention on handrails, so always a safe. Uh, also to come out of the water, you might wonder what is this? This is the boarding ladder. You unhook this hatch, take it out, goes down in the water. When you come back on the boat, you want a nice safe handle on the deck to come back up. So this is the, the, the transom of the S7, of course. Uh, this door pivot this way, uh, creating a, a beach platform. Uh, obviously, we can't open it here at this dock, so I will open it as much as we can to show you. Uh, but picture it that um, um, once it's open, becomes uh, uh, basically uh, this entire surface that we will see uh, is enough is wide and long enough to accommodate uh, two up to three actually chaise long some baiting chains long and uh, uh, anyway is a beautiful lounging uh, area that can be used to uh, you know access the water and have uh, a good time in close contact uh, with the, uh, the water garage uh, is designed let me go as down as much down as I can without risking to damage so but give you the idea of the dimension of this platform uh, the garage is actually designed to host two water toys so you can have uh, a, a 13 and a half uh, feet tender and a Cedus Park a jet ski the compact jet ski next to it uh, which uh, is actually pretty unique for this uh, size of boat and uh, uh, you know, on one end, uh, they don't pollute, if you wish, the exterior line of the boat. So once your toys are in the garage and this door is closed, your boat will always look as pretty as it has been designed without hanging uh, uh, weird uh, components on the transom. But also they are uh, always protected from the environment. They are, uh, once you rinse them off with fresh water and you put them in here, uh, they're going to be protected. They are not exposed to the sun. The upholstery doesn't, doesn't get abused by the sun. And uh, so it's, it's a double purpose, cosmetic, but also technical to preserve uh, your toys. Uh, this tent obviously is intended uh, to make uh, uh, this area looks a little bit more uh, pretty if you wish when imagine that the platform is down now your toys are in the water and you're you're using a platform you have a couple of chairs on a chaise long you don't want to look into a garage which is more technical space you have a dedicated tent when you roll it down it actually has an azimuth yacht logo on it so it's a beautiful tight uh, tent which cover uh, the garage and uh, so I guess that here from the transom we have completed our work through video on this uh, Azimut Yacht S7. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any question, please do not hesitate to contact us uh, at to locate your official dealer. And uh, have a nice day. Thank you.